Hey guys, uh, so right the base here, and today we're going to be doing Scrap Mechanic tutorial, and this tutorial is going to be about building your own engine in Scrap Mechanic. So what you're going to have to do is lay down your lift and build a base for your crankshaft. About that big, I'm going to be building an inline floor. So make a platform like that, make sure it's even. I didn't make it even. There, make a nice hole right there and put a bearing. And then you're gonna have to make it longer, I didn't make it long enough. So make it about that long. And you need all the pipes for the crankshaft. So what you're gonna have to do is make a cross with your with one blocks. Then you're gonna need suspension. You're gonna need the suspension for it to pass through the piston. So place it like three in every corner, and place a bearing, and place a pipe, and then that little, that little pipe thing. And then you're gonna to have to put pipes like that, and get the little connector pipe, like that. And then put a normal pipe right there for a bearing, and then do the same thing again, but turn it slightly. So I'm getting this suspension again, and put it that way now. So then, you get a bearing, and you basically, yeah, a bearing. So then you do that, then you get those connected pipes again. Those are where our pistons are going to connect, and then get the curved pipes, and then connect it, and then make the bearing. So then that. Do the cross again, and move it down, like always. But with this one, you're gonna have to move the top suspension so the piston can pass through it. So then, basically, doing the same thing that you were doing in the last two, like that, and then like that. And we can do the last uh, crankshaft piston connection point. I put that bearing. Then this is the last piston. Now it's on that side. Do the same thing, you know, place your bearings. And then make one connector pipe. Then what you're gonna have to do is do it normally until you put the connector pipe down. Then you're gonna have to make the pipe too long. Like that. And then make the outside wall. That's where our power is going to be outputted to. In there. And go in there. Right there. Right there. Now that's our crankshaft done. Now you should be able to make it rotate smoothly. Without it... It should look like that. Without it getting stuck. <clears throat> As you see, now I'm going to hit it with a hammer show you that's what's supposed to it's supposed to move not get stuck so make sure it's like that then what we're going to have to do is to make the pistons you're going to get two of those long pipes and stick them straight out into the air like that that's what you want to do do those to all four of the connectors and then you should have your connecting rods there, so now it's time to make the pistons themselves. So that's what it should look like. Now it's time to make the pistons. So what you're gonna have to do is to make first the little connectors that make the pistons be able to sway without being stuck. So make a curve pipe with a bearing and then a curve pipe uh, pointing straight into the air. Do these to all of the connecting rods then you should be able to attach your pistons to the connecting rods and they shouldn't rub against the cylinder wall and get stuck. So I'm doing that right now, I'll start with that. So you see, curved pipe, bearing, pipe straight in the air. That's what you have to do if you haven't noticed yet. So then I'm going to do the last one now. 
There, okay. Now you're gonna have to make the pistons. So this is the shape of piston that you're going to want. About like six or seven blocks, I didn't count them, but it has to look like that. And add two pistons on each side. And this is going to be like a two dagger style piston. So you're going to have to have these little dongles on the ends to build little, little supports for the second layer of pistons to sit on. So just basically do the thing that was on the layer before and then just add pistons. But on this part, you're going to have to add uh, a little cover to the pistons for the rockets so they fit firmly against the cylinder wall. So this uh, is a long bit. You just have to do this for all the pistons. So I'll check back with you when I'm done with all the pistons. Okay, so I'm done with all the pistons now. And, uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. That's, that's the little thing. So that's what they're supposed to look like. Make sure they're all lined up straight. You can see I messed up one piston here, so I'm going to have to re-weld that to where it's supposed to be. And what I do is... I, like, paint a little white spot where I'm supposed to weld it. I'm gonna do that in a second now. Yeah, so now I'm gonna paint that spot, and I'm just gonna get my hammer. And knock the piston off the spot. There. And now I'm going to attach the wall right there. But uh, I need a staircase, so I just build a little staircase there. Make sure your pistons are straight. You see, I have lots of trouble with this when pistons are straight. That's the main problem that I always have, but you'll see. Uh, okay, it still isn't straight, but right after this, I make it completely straight. So then, after I make these pistons straight, we can start with the cylinder walls. Then we're about done. Okay, so this is the time when I make it, when I actually attach it fully. Okay, and there. Okay, so now every single one of the pistons are lined up completely straight. That is what you want. And now it is time to make the cylinder walls. So what you're going to have to do for that, after I do some nice shots there, just drop and make sure all the joints move freely. And then we can start making the cylinder wall. So what you're gonna have to do for that is grab the the top block up there. Start from that block and just drag it completely out. And then go from the top and then go to the other corner. Make sure all the cylinders are completely flush with the pistons. There, that's what you want. And now you gotta build the walls that are that direction. So I have to get in there, so they are pretty self-explanatory. And this is how you have to make a bearing. You see that pipe right there? You gotta make just a little wall that makes it fit through. That makes the engine just run smoother, smoother, and makes it more reliable. So do that to all the pistons, and when you're done with that, your engine should com be moving completely smoothly, and then we can do what I call the controller test, which shows if the engine has any weak spots or if it gets stuck in some places. About done with the bearings now and the walls. Just have to do this one. There. Now time for the bearing. Okay, this one. Just make the little wall. Like that. And then I have to make a little hole in my cylinder wall. But you can just bring that right back. 
there, and then I put the little thing, and I gotta go on the other side. There. <laughs> That's pretty aggravating. There, okay, now the bearing is done. Then I just get my walls back there. And then it's time for the controller test after I put on the front plate of this piston. Now you should be done with your cylinder walls. And then your engine is very close to being done now. So now it is time for the controller test. Which is, you need to get a controller. And just put it somewhere like that. And you get a switch. And one of those wire controller magics, I never know the name of. And wire the controller up to the main crankshaft bearing. And then open the controller and set the controller for 360 degrees. And then click the repeat. And then your engine should rotate smoothly like this. If it doesn't, go back and watch the video over again and see what you did wrong. But my engine is working smoothly. So now to actually get the engine working on its own power, we're going to have to add what I call the timing belt, even though it's not a belt. So you're going to have to add that, like that shape, and you're going to need sensors. Put the sensors in four sensors, like that. Make sure they look like that. And then you're going to have to get your wire controller, whatever it's called, and attach it down the line. So start from that piston with that sensor. Then you're going to have to move downwards. So as you see, I drop it and the piston and the engine goes that way. So that means next sensor will... So this sensor will be attached to this piston and then on and on and on and on. And then this sensor will be attached to that piston. And the top sensor will be attached to this piston. Your engine is so close to working. It will actually turn, but you need a flywheel. That's what your engine should look like right now. It should run. You're so close to being done, but you're not completely done. Now, you're going to need to mess with the sensors. Turn them down to one and turn off the sound to all of them. And it doesn't, you don't hear much of the sensor noises. There, okay. So now you need your flywheel. So get the big wheel and attach those big wheels to the power outlet point there. And there's your engine. Your engine should be working fine, like this one here. And uh, you can use this to power any sort of thing. In the next Scrap Mechanic tutorial video, I'll show you how to use this engine to make a car. So, yeah, this is Ray the Base, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!